What's your minimum specification? A number of the AI startups, you know, they're focusing on, you know, say, ease of deployment, that software hardware mix, but, uh, you know, simplified code installation. We've got a company doing single core designs, going for peak tops per watt or consistent, you know, batch one performance. Mm -hmm. Is there something about Grayscale right now that makes that the inference chip of choice for customers against all the competition? So p purely on technical metrics, I think it's it stacks up very well. Uh, you know, it, it, versus other other options uh, that are available out there. Uh, the the one thing that Grayscale can do, uh, which I believe at least most most of the alternatives that that I look at can't, is uh, essentially in the realm of uh, uh, conditional computation, uh, dynamic sparsity handling. So things to to um, to make an example, if if you're doing Training, for example, today, for the most part, nobody can uh, use sparsity at all. So the, the way it gets sparsity, sparsity gets used usually is you train a chip with no assumptions. Uh, you train a model with no assumptions on sparsity. Eventually, you post-process it. Uh, after the fact, then you, you make a lot of weights for the model zero, and it becomes kind of a sparse model for, for uh, inference. So we're able to, to use sparsity to a lot of gain dur during training. For example, uh, even during inference, where most folks focus on these weights, where there's a, a trade-off in how many you're going to prune out and make zeros and what kind of quality you're, you'll be left with after after doing that, uh, we're able to make use of sparsity in intermediate results, in activations, in basically stuff that's not fixed at known at compile time, like, like weights for, uh, for, for inference. And then finally, we're able to do uh, relatively programmatic stuff in the in the neural network compute graphs. So we're very good at having a bunch of heavy math like matrix multiplies or convolutions or whatever, followed by a node that does something that's completely completely programmatic. Right. So it's it's not math heavy. It's a sort. It's a general program. Every one of our cores has a, uh, has a set of Risk Five uh, you know engines in it, which can basically run uh, whatever you want uh, on them. So we believe pretty deeply that as neural nets continue evolving, both the dynamic sparsity and conditional computation, as well as this kind of program in the graph kind of story, are going to be getting more and more important, primarily because, uh, you know, just putting in a bunch of expensive math has led the largest models of today to already be data center sized. And uh, the, the, the scaling with, with no smarts is kind of difficult to sustain. So, I mean, ha ha having this sort of co conditional computation in each of your cores, you're sacrificing, a f you know, a few uh, compute per millimeter squared, essentially, but you get that more flexibility within the compute stack within the model application, right? I mean, uh, you, you get the flexibility, definitely. Uh, adding programmability isn't free, as, as usual, so so there's, there's a bit of sacrifice there. But when you look at the, uh, you know, the raw numbers, uh, the let's say the area of those risks uh, compared to to the rest of the block is sub five percent, right? P power, same kind of story. So ultimately, if you play your cards right, what you pay doesn't have to be, you know, hugely noticeable in the in the pie chart of everything that goes into this design. And we think we struck a good balance.